Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. I should have made you stand a little bit longer. Maybe sing through that gospel first session again. Yeah. Seek ye. Oh, okay. You guys like my singing almost as much as my students do. They love my custom written songs for them. They, they don't. They don't. They've said that they're going to start a support group with my husband and the vice principal for people who have been personally victimized by Meg's singing. I think several of you would probably join. Anyway, let's talk. Um, God's greatest gift is that um, Deacon Cherry read that gospel instead of the one about divorce. So, lucky you, I'm not going to talk about divorce the Sunday before Valentine's Day, and I totally was. Look, I have a lot of self-loathing, but not that much. I'm not setting myself up. But I think all of our readings, Deacon Sherry was right, all of our readings have a common theme, and that is that you and I love loopholes. We love a good loophole because we have all these rules that we love to set out, right? We love rules. We love rules for other people. So we like, you know, books upon books and books of laws and all this stuff. In fact, um, when we were cleaning out um, my parents' house and getting ready to move, my dad had loads of um, the, uh, what's the term for them? Um, the codes of Iowa, right? From like when he was in office. So he had a code for every. They're like this big. Because you want to know what? We don't get rid of laws. We don't get rid of them. We just add new ones. We love rules. But then we spend an enormous amount of time trying to get around them. Because really laws and rules are for other people, not for us. So we're always looking for a good loophole. In fact, my favorite is I had a student who tried to quote something in the Bible this week to me. I'm like the worst person to come and do that with, right? Like, if you're a preteen, do not come at me with your Bible, okay? Just don't do it. And because they don't know. They don't know. I'm incognito there. I'm Mrs. Me- I'm Ms. Meg there. So they don't know. And he tries to say, well, Bible says God doesn't like blah, blah. I'm like, really, does it? Yeah. And I said, do you realize that same passage right afterwards says you can't say anything bad about your parents, and if you do, you have to be put to death? Oh. He was like, okay. And I was like, yeah. Don't come at me with with your scripture quoting, because I know it. I studied it. I have a degree in it. Several, in fact. So, but we love these, we love rules, right? And so Jesus comes to them and is like, okay, so here's the deal. You guys spent, because they're always trying to get out of stuff, right? I mean, everybody wants to divorce the first wife and get with a pretty wife later. Don't, don't act like you don't. I mean, I want a pretty wife. Who doesn't? I want one who does things that I don't want to do. That's what I want. I know. In my house, she has a name, Brenda. Yeah, right? We all have who, who you want for the second spouse. Um, because we learned with the first. We've been taking notes. We've been taking notes, and now here comes your divorce sermon um, that you've been waiting for so patiently. Uh, but we love, we love rules, and so Jesus comes to them, and he's like, okay, stop. Just stop, because you don't understand the rules. In the same way that that kid was trying to quote scripture and rules about other people whilst ignoring the ones that apply to ourselves, that's generally kind of what we do. Um, think about it. Um, there are rules that we think are really, really important for people to follow. Anyone go five miles over the speed limit? Like, I know exactly, I know exactly the amount of miles over the speed limit that I can go, and I don't do it through Lake Lottawana. Lake Lottawana, you go five under. I'm here to tell you. 
Otherwise, you're paying like Ladawana's new something or other that they're getting, I don't know. Um, but we have the rules that we think are important and the rules that we're like, yeah, probably not so important. And Jesus says, you don't get the point of the rules, do you? It wasn't about the rules. It was about having, having some ideas about how to love each other, how to live together in grace and patience and justice and love. All of it was that because I don't know if you guys have noticed, it's kind of hard to live in love. Have you noticed? I mean, like, it's easy for me to love you guys, but, like, there are some people I'm like, I love you. Don't really like you, but I love you. I know God does, so I know I'm supposed to, but it's a struggle. And so sometimes we have certain rules in our society or certain things that we follow because we know that we should love those people, but you do not want to stop at the crosswalk for them, do you? You want to hit the, ex don't act like you don't. You want to hit the accelerator. You do. Let's be real. And so sometimes those rules are really about helping us live in community. They're not about the rules, okay? It was always about the love and the justice and the grace that was behind the rules. And that's what we miss. And so Jesus comes at us and he says, hold on. It's not about divorce. It's not about what are all the different rules that he kind of goes through. He has, he has quite a few. It was never about that. It was about loving and caring for each other. And so if your reasons for trying to find these loopholes harm other people, then you broke it. And frankly, that was worse. Because I'll tell you what's worse than going five miles over the speed limit. Hating another human. There's no law about that, is there? So we think we can get away with it. We spend a lot of time trying to find ways to justify it when really that was the biggest crime of all. The greatest crime of all is looking at another human and not realizing that God loves them just as much as God loves you. That's the greatest crime of all. And it's so easy. It's so easy to commit it, isn't it? We do it every day. We dehumanize. We justify our own actions that harm and then we act like, oh, we're good Christian people. I like Jesus. He's my bro. Oh, you only love God as much as you love the person you like the least. I'm going to say it again. You've heard me say it before. I'm going to say it again because it's so important for us to hear again and again and again. That's why Jesus says it so many times. And we keep ignoring it. We go for his other passages that are a little bit more warm and fuzzy. And then we're like, hey, what up, Leviticus? You own me, because this is me too. Did you know a sermon never applies to anyone more than it does the clergy person preaching it? That's why God gives them to us to preach, because we need to hear them. So we, we only love God as much as we love the person we like the least. Ooh, that's tough. And that's why Jesus has to say it again and again and again, because we're always looking for loopholes. We're always looking for ways to justify our own not good behaviors. Right? We have memes about them. We have State of the Union addresses about them. We have all sorts of different things that we do to justify our actions. And say, but, but God is on board with this, because I don't know, Leviticus, but then we miss the other parts. Because ain't nobody letting anyone glean anything. And ain't nobody welcoming the stranger among them like they do their own brother and sister. Because it's tough. And you and I like the rules because it gives us a loophole. And Jesus is here to close the loopholes. Because the only law there really is, is love. That's it. The whole Bible. All of it. I know a lot of it feels like it doesn't agree with itself, does it? 
it feels like it's counterintuitive in some places, that it disagrees with itself, that it's arguing. And I'll tell you why. Because it's a whole book of the stories of tons of different humans and their experience of the divine. There is one common thread. One. That's it. There is a common thread of love. Of always pushing us further to love what we don't want to love. To love who we don't want to love. That is it. That is the common thread. That is God's common thread. The arc is always towards love. I'm here to tell you, as the queen of the loophole, there ain't no loopholes. Want me to sing about it? Welcome home to St. Anne's. In God's kingdom, there ain't no loopholes. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. Maybe in God's kingdom.